Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Government shutdown still going on. Not much to do in the city. I beg to differ. I am at the Science History Museum, which is right next to the Liberty Museum that I did last week. It's at 3rd and Chestnut. It's free. Donations. You know. You come in, and they talk about the history of science and chemistry, and they have old tools that people used to use. Hey, they got that thing and that thing. And, right? Like, they, 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 they teach you about how everyday basic science is affecting your life. Like, really cool thing right here. That is a Lit Brothers credit card from the 1900s. And that's a credit card from 1928. And there we are now with the chip cards. Whenever you use your chip card, does it ever not read your chip? I think we should go back to those plates. Okay, and there's some new, uh, they got some, you know, artificial heart stuff. So, you want to learn about the history of science. And you already did the Franklin Institute a hundred times, you walk through the heart. But why don't you come here? The people are real nice and friendly. See, this, this is cool. Uh, <clears throat> back in the day, there was a stuff called DDT. And I'm not talking about Jake the Stink Roberts, Brucifer. DDT was the stuff that they used to kill bugs and insects. That wallpaper there is made of DDT. Turns out, DDT is not really good for humans either. <clears throat> but, all right, so here we go. So they got old-timey science tools. And uh, yeah, how crystals affect telephones. And this is uh, one of the first MRI machines. And there's how an MRI machine looks. And this guy, yeah, that guy who wrote that in that book won that prize, a Nobel Prize winner, handwriting in a book. Pretty neat. And there's the history of light bulbs. Nice and slow. Nice and slow. And there's they have magnified microchips, so you can see how, how, how they are. And if you look on the side, how tiny they are. It talks about pollution and the tools they use to clean up. And in here, I'm going to go in here. All right. They gotta have a security guard in here. But they have a. Oh, you gotta pull the door, stupid, not push. All right. Uh, let me hold the door open for the security guard. He has to make sure. Cause I was gonna steal all the paintings, but now here he is. He's gonna save the day. So, back in the day, they, uh, the, the scientists were trying to turn non gold into gold. And then, uh, that's how, yeah. So, in the 13 and 1700s, Acclimist thing. And this is a bunch of paintings of old-timey scientists. It kind of looks like they're doing witchcraft, but it's not witchcraft. It's the beginning of uh, chemistry, and science, and, and technology, and, and all. I just went, who, who, who's painting this? <laughs> but this is a room full of that stuff. And this is not the Please Touch Museum. Do not touch anything in here. Yeah, there's a Japanese pufferfish, but you want to touch it. Right. There you go. All right. Wow, wow. There's another one of those things, right? All right. Now we're gonna. All right. I didn't steal anything. I was going to. I was going to, but security caught me. All right. We're gonna. We're gonna go up. Here, thank you, sir. And they have an upstairs. Look, last steps. Now, <clears throat> these aren't see-through glass steps. I don't know if I could do it if it was see-through glass. <laughs> they got some other stuff, more books and science. Becoming a chemist. You know, the stuff down here tells you all about that. And how, how chemistry came to universities. It wasn't just like witchcraft anymore. It was, it was doctors and scientists, and, and they were learning and developing things. This is a cool part. Old tiny chemistry sets from the 50s. Look at what they used to give kids to play with. <laughs> Sulfur. Uh, uh, 
so fight. I don't know. Now, I don't know if that's dangerous, but it could be. And then nowadays, the kids get this stuff where they can uh, build volcanoes. A little bit more dangerous back in the 50s, but more fun, I'd say. Right. Another pitch in. And then, let's see, where are we at? Okay. More books. More tools of the trade that scientists learn to make the world a better place for you and for me. There's, there's an old timey magnifying glass. And now the chemists of today, you know, they're making science technology better, and but now they have to uh, solve the problems of today, pollution, and and stuff like that. And there's a. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, I'm going to put the link to the the uh, this place at the bottom of the description here. They do podcasts. They have lectures. Uh, this is world renowned. People come from all over the world to come here and speak, uh, to look at these tools. And uh, it's been here. It's free. And this is my first time here, right? So uh, the government shutdown is at least teaching that there's more than just uh, historic sites in Philadelphia. And, right? Oh, here's my favorite part. The invention of nylon. Look, there's a bra. Look at that bra. How painful does that look? That dress was made of nothing but nylon. And again, you can't touch. I want to touch that. You can't. And this. And then. And then they got like little. Th th you, could, you can touch this. Don't think I'm breaking the wall or anything here. Like, you can learn about the history of flip-flops. You pop a flip-flop on this table, tells you. You put the object there. And I tell you, now, I wear nothing but flip-flops in the summer. And uh, they, they tell you about how, how rubber can be soft and hard. The whole history of flip-flops. You can learn it here. You pop it there. Right, the history of the syringe. Let's learn about the syringe. Oh, vaccines. Oh, boy. What was the first vaccine? I don't know. Place object here. Small Smallpox was eradicated, but it did come back uh, recently because it was anti-vaxxers. If you're an anti-vaxxer, don't do that. All right, here you go. So pretty neat. So like I said, it's a third and chestnut. Real nice people. Link in the description below. It's free. Do a donation. I'll be a jerk off. And uh, that's it. Look, the world of science. It's like the Franklin Institute, but for smart people. Toodles.